Hi everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Digital Asset Management Best Practices. Who gives a damn? You do, which is why you've joined today's webinar. My name is John Ryan. I'm VP of Marketing at Intelligence Bank. And joining me today is Jade Porter, Intelligence Bank's Product Success Manager, who will be taking you through today's demonstration. So for anyone new to Intelligence Bank, we're marketers who make software for marketers. Our solutions include digital asset management, which is the focus of today's webinar, our brand hub portals, which are awesome for online brand guidelines and brand compliance, and our marketing operations platform, which is an MRM solution for managing and approving all your marketing and creative projects. What makes Intelligence Bank different is our ability to bridge that gap between marketing efficiency and marketing compliance for our solutions. So today's agenda, we will be discussing digital asset management or DAM. This webinar will be helpful for anyone who already has a DAM, including Intelligence Bank, as well as people exploring a DAM for the first time. We'll be covering why having a DAM platform is so important. We'll share our best practices for setting it up and using it and give you a demonstration of those best practices and then end for questions. So what is digital asset management or DAM software? It's a platform that helps you create, manage, find, share, and track your digital assets all in one location. Why is this important? Well, according to Accenture, 90% of marketing material is never put to use because it's not relevant, out of date, or not access accessible. To Fortune 500 companies, this represents 300 billion each year recreating those misplaced assets. A well-designed dam removes that risk, saving organizations time and money. Dams allow you to organize all your content in one system, so team members and external partners can find what they need quickly and easily, allowing you to unleash the power of your content. Dams can help you ensure that all your approved assets are always kept up to date and that old assets are never used by mistake, your DAM can be leveraged to streamline many different organizational workflows, which we'll talk more about later. And DAMs are becoming essential for effective remote collaboration, which is becoming more and more common. A well-constructed DAM creates opportunities to consolidate redundant tools. DAMs could replace your content storage tools like shared drives, replace file sharing services for emailing very large files, they can replace some of the many collaboration tools most companies end up with. With Intelligence Bank, our users can transform images on the fly within the platform, which may mean your organization needs less creative licenses for non-creative users. So DAMS can help you simplify and consolidate. DAMS make it easy for you to publish brand approved content to the rest of the organization, ensuring better brand consistency and brand compliance as well as minimizing the risk of violating content usage rights. And DAMS can help you protect and share sensitive assets, ensuring content can only be seen by the people who are meant to see it. And finally, DAMS can help you monitor content effectiveness, including omni-channel content reporting, so you can see which assets are being used and where, essentially getting an ROI for your assets. So that's just some of the value a well-designed dam can provide an organization. However, if your dam is not set up correctly or difficult to use, companies don't get much value from them. So on that note, let's share our best practices for digital asset management. Best practice number one, audit your assets. Auditing your assets is essential if you're designing a new dam. You're not gonna just load every asset into your dam, Audits will help you identify what to add and what's missing. Regular audits are also very helpful for getting the most out of your existing DAM too. And DAM should make auditing assets easy with simple reports and dashboards. Common questions you wanna be asking include, what assets do you have? What assets are being overused? What assets are being underused? And what assets are missing? By doing this audit, you may discover gaps or missing content. You may identify duplicate files. You may discover that some expired assets are still being used by the business. One of my favorite reports is to see the review dates on when assets are meant to expire 
That way I can be sure that we never violate any asset or talent usage rights. Key takeaway here is to have someone who regularly checks your dam usage reports. The dam should be automatic and quick to run. It's worthwhile spending that few minutes each week informing yourself how you could better use your dam and more importantly, how your organization can make better use of your assets. Best practice number two, centralize your assets. This includes all your images, such as logos, website images, videos, all your customer facing material, including PDFs, docs, and presentations. Many of our customers are now storing other file types too, such as podcasts. And at the start of your damn journey, your assets will reside in many locations, file drives, portals, website platforms, to name a few. Your creative teams will probably have hundreds of files on the desktops that nobody has access to. And most staff will have presentations or documents on their desktop and multiple versions of those documents too. So the best dam implementations not only consolidate all your assets onto a single platform, but they reduce or eliminate your need to keep storing these assets in every other platform and desktop. And storing all your assets in one location means storing multiple versions in one location too, using version control. So you can be sure that everyone is using the latest file. When it comes to centralizing assets, it's important to remember that it is a journey. Dam best practice is to keep ensuring your assets remain centralized, moving away from those desktops and other repositories. Best practice number three, make self-service easy, starting with consistent naming conventions. Your audit may reveal that you have some files that have inconsistent names. And in this example, there are four file names, all similar yet different. One has V7 in the name, another has final, another has a published date after the one called final. Consistent uh, naming conventions make it so much easier for people to identify the right file first time. So what we recommend is you avoid jargon, keep the file name simple, rename the inconsistent files to help people find what they're looking for. And if it is actually the same file, use version control. That way your team can easily find the latest file, which is what they really want. Another way to make self-service easy is taking the time to map your folder structure. And we see all sorts of folder structures. Some clients uh, just use one folder or no folders and actually rely on search to find all their content. Others have seven to 15 folders, which is pretty well controlled. And some do have hundreds of folders, which Maybe why they've joined today's webinar. Um, but folders are useful when they're grouped in a way that makes the most logical sense for your business. Um, some examples of logical groupings include uh, grouping folders by asset types, such as images, videos, audio, logos, case studies, etc., or by departments, or by countries, or by campaigns. And there is no single right answer here. Uh, the right answer is the one where everyone can just easily find the assets they're looking for. However, where most organizations go wrong with folders is they end up becoming too granular with them. So there's nothing worse than drilling down seven folders deep to find an asset only to see that it's not there. And it's very easy to think that folders uh, are making things easy to find. However, unless it's actually mapped out logically, what it can end up doing is hiding your content instead. So as you add more and more folders, it can create a structure where uh, a file should actually now logically reside in multiple folders. So uh, the example that you see here is folders by department, and you can actually see that product marketing and sales all have folders for data sheets, case studies, and white papers. So folder structure like this are better avoided because it's unlikely that all of these folders will be kept up to date. But with just a little folder mapping, you can see that data sheets, white papers and case studies can live in just one folder. And it's actually more intuitive to find. Uh, people can find what they're looking for in a couple of clicks instead of four layers deep. Um, and some people do ask us, why do you need folders at all? And uh, certainly folders are really great when grouped well, uh, quickly find what you want. 
Um, however, they're also great for locking down specific assets. So if you only wanted uh, people in a certain country or product team to, to just see those files in that folder, folders can work really well. Um, but certainly try not to create duplicate areas. Rather than spending your time relying on highly sophisticated folder structures, spend your time making your search more powerful instead, which is best practice number four. And the secret to a powerful search is your metadata layer. Metadata is data about your data, such as the create date, created by, file type, file size, dimensions. And this type of metadata is typically embedded into your file. And when you add a file into your DAM, you will also want to add any custom descriptive metadata that will help people search for that file. You can see in this example, there are a lot of useful identifying keywords such as happy, adult, smiling, sweater, confident, that can really help when searching for that perfect image. And one of the great things about Intelligence Bank is AutoTag. So our AI and machine learning actually suggested all of those keywords about the objects, such as color, making tagging files with those keywords less work. You can keep the keywords, remove them, or add your own as well. Another powerful feature Intelligence Banks offers is facial recognition, where you can train the system to use photos of specific people, such as executives or paid talent, provided you have their consent, of course. This can then tag other photos with their faces. And uh, coming later this year, we're also going to be adding video transcription, closed captions, and image to text identifiers too. So the aim is to make searching for content easier for everybody with less work. Best practice number five, share it. Now this sounds simple, but any DAM manager on this call will know that this is where the training really kicks in. So the goal here is you want to train your organization to deliver assets directly from the DAM. And the best way to do that is to start sharing with them. So there are three ways to share assets from your DAM. Uh, you can email, which is where you email people a link uh, to an asset and that asset could be of any size and you email it from the DAM. You can link an asset uh, where you can essentially get a link, uh, which you could put in a email or in a document um, where it gives people access by clicking on that link. And that link could be public or private. And you can embed an asset into a web page using a CDN link. So with Intelligence Bank, you can also set up public portals where you can make any asset or just a collection of certain assets publicly accessible via a link, which means anyone will be able to access it. Um, th these uh, public portals can even come with their own custom welcome pages, so you can make the experience look really nice and professional. Best practice number six, integrate your MarTech stack. Your dam is not an island, so to get more value from your assets, make your dam the foundation of your MarTech stack. And you can do this using integrations, APIs, and connectors. Now, connectors are awesome. They connect your assets to the apps that you use every day, saving people the manual step of downloading the latest asset from the dam and then uploading that asset into their application. So as this slide shows, you can actually access your dam assets directly from your application, in this case, uh, PowerPoint, Excel, and Word ensuring that you are always using the latest brand approved assets and saving yourself time and clicks. Intelligence Bank has connectors to all your productivity apps, including Microsoft Office and Google Workspaces, as well as the Adobe suite, which your designers will love. And you can connect your assets to your CMS suite as well, such as WordPress, and even application development platforms like Figma or Sketch. So again, connectors are a way to stop people relying on having the, to save the assets from the dam onto their desktop and then uploading them um, to the application. It's a time saver and it also gives you better control of your brand too. Uh, one other note, Intelligence Bank's API allows you to program the dam to other applications, uh, creating what's called a headless dam, meaning that you can interact with the dam using other applications without actually using the dam interface. Best practice number six, transform assets on the fly. 
So rather than having dozens of variations of the exact same image living on your dam, complicating everything, keep one quality image and then download or share using transformations. From the dam itself, you can select your preferred file type like JPEG or PNG. You can choose your compression types. You can even choose your dimensions or crop your image to be the right dimensions for your specific campaign. With Intelligence Bank, you can set up your own presets so people don't need to guess. They'll always be using the exact dimensions, file type and compression. So transformations are all about saving your organization from having those hundred variations of virtually the same thing residing on your dam. Intelligence Bank can also do brand approved creative templates, which allow users to localize collateral that is locked down as brand approved. So this is perfect for satellite offices, branches, franchises, because it enables everyday staff that may not be near a marketing team to self-serve, while also helping the marketing teams ensure the rest of the business is staying brand compliant. So again, our theme here, efficiency plus compliance. Best practice number eight, automate dam workflows. There, are no, there is no limit to the number of automated workflows that you could trigger from your dam. And what we just uh, told you with creative templates is a form of automated workflow. Some other favorites include download request approvals, where you can require an approval first before an asset can be downloaded. This can be great for certain user profiles, such as agencies and partners. This is excellent also if you really want to lock down your brand. Variations on this include workflow approvals that require permission only for specific scenarios. So for example, it might be okay for an employee to use an asset for online use only. However, if that asset was gonna be used on let's say a TV commercial, you might want approval from the CMO or CEO. So this workflow is great for audit trials, um, which will track if assets were approved for use by whom and when. Other workflows include website connectors, uh, which are fantastic because you can just update an image in your dam. And if you're using the CDN link, it will also automatically update your website too. You can automatically detect duplicate files, um, even if they have a different file name, um, the system can pick those up. And with Intelligence Bank, you can integrate into other third party tools using handshakes. So you can connect to messaging tools so that they, uh, the, the tools notify their users if any new assets have been added or edited, edited. You can set up automations to third party project management tools, file storage tools, e-commerce tools, and much more. So automating is fantastic. It simply saves you the hassle of having to do manual work. Best practice number nine, automate compliance. So dams and compliance are a match made in heaven and a strength for intelligence bank. Compliance automations include approval workflows where assets are approved before use and a good dam will track everything, having a flexible workflow approval system that can be designed to fit your business. On the topic of approvals, intelligence bank enables proofing as part of the approval workflows. So that way you can track all comments and annotations, even compare versions side by side, along with seeing what was approved and when. You can automate alerts for expiring assets, which is really important if uh, you license any assets or use paid talent. Um, you can certainly see that in a report, but having those emails coming to you, letting you know is very helpful. You could also set up your dam to be a marketing inbox. So instead of people emailing your marketing teams for a logo five times a week, they could go to your dam, request what they need using a form, and depending on their request, either get instant access to that asset or set up an approval workflow. So what this automation is doing is taking marketing requests away from email and into your dam, which is a good thing. Best practice number 10, governance and reporting, starting with single sign-on. So people love it. It's much easier than entering a password and it's great for governance. It's also best practice to lock down uh, access with permissions so that people, only people who are meant to see the content can see those content. 
And this can be locked down at the folder or asset level, as well as locking down functionality such as viewing versus creating at the user and group level plus workflows. So a good dam will have these granular permissions, so make good use of them. We recommend um, uh, you have ready to go dashboards for monitoring your dam assets and usage. So these questions we mentioned in the best practice one, audit your assets, um, they should all be accessible here, um, such as total assets, expiring assets, new assets. You'll wanna keep track of your content usage, like top downloaded resources, as well as user activity. So governance allows you to control access to what people can do and what they're accessing within your dam. Reporting helps you make sure it's working. So that is our 10 best practices for digital asset management. I'm gonna hand over now to Jade, who's gonna take you through a demo of these best practices in action using Intelligence Bank. So over to you, Jade. Thanks, John. All right, so let's bring those best practices to life. And now we have our Intelligence Bank platform on screen. As you'll see in the top, we have our dashboard area, our asset library, otherwise known as DAM or library, depending on what our clients want to call it. We have our brand hub for our interactive brand guidelines, projects for marketing operation products and our approval center. So let's jump straight into our DAM today. And as we just heard, one of the really important things about a dam is the ability to protect your assets. And when we're talking about protecting your assets, what we're saying is that you have the ability to ensure that you only give access to the people who should see the content. So who can see what? And if they can see it, what are they allowed to do? So for instance, you might have your American team only seen uh, product images related to milliliters. Oh, sorry, Oz whereas your um, UK or APAC teams may see milliliters. So again, that protection of assets. We also wanna protect them once they're in there. So who's allowed to upload to your dam or not? So those permissions really do allow you to empower yourself to ensure your dam is set up correctly. Now, when we come into the folder structure, as you can see, we've gone for an asset style, um, asset type uh, folder structure and you want to keep it as flat as possible. So when we're talking about that, we don't wanna get down into that seventh level and can't find something. And we don't wanna have assets that live in multiple areas. So it's a bit confusing why you can't find it. So keeping that folder level flat and easy to find is again, one of our best practices. Now in my dam, the first thing I wanna do is upload an asset. So I'm going to upload an asset and I'm going to ensure that it has all of the right data and all of the right metadata. I'll simply add my asset. And today I'm only doing one, but you could do up to 300 to 500 to even 3000, depending. Now, when I do have um, an asset that is already on my platform, AI helps me work out that maybe I shouldn't be uploading it. So this is our duplication warning to let you know we believe this asset's already on your platform somewhere else. Please click here to see if it's exactly the same. If it's exactly the same, we don't wanna upload the same file in multiple areas. We want single source of truth. So you might just um, not upload it or maybe move that file to a different folder. If however, it is the asset that you want, but it's been updated. So maybe we've edited it in some way, or maybe it's the version for 2021 or 2022, then you could simply upload a new version instead and keep that single source of truth. Once we know we want that asset, this is where we can update things like our name, our description. We can use our, this is what our AI tagged automatically. I can edit and delete some of those and I can add more as needed and make sure that this is really searchable. I can also use my review date again, so I can say how long is this asset valid, whether it's just because it's something we want to review or whether it's a licensing agreement or even a consent form that we wanna be made aware of. As we scroll down, we can add further information, including our filters to make sure again, this is searchable and we're protecting our teams by helping them self-serve content that's appropriate for what they need. 
So again, our best practice is ensuring that you're adding the right data to the right assets to help that self-serve. Once we've uploaded our assets with the right metadata and the right tags, from here, the next thing your team members need to do is actually find them. So I can come to my platform here and type in a keyword. So I know I want something yellow. And for everyone on the call, I'm sure you've had an email that's, hey, can we have a photo of someone smiling, maybe wearing yellow that's small or something innovative? So instead of you having to go through libraries and help them find what they need, they're gonna come in and type those keywords and find what they need. So we've gone from a few hundred, 400 assets down to 12 so far. I can then add my filters and come in and say, well, I need it to be about product one. And that's reduced it now down to 10 assets. So we can say eight assets. And then I can come in and add my brand again, and it will slowly drill into the asset that I'm actually looking for. So in this case now, I needed something yellow for product and, and brand A1. Now I have my assets and I found them simply and easily. So again, really empowering your team members to find the content they need when they need it. We also, of course, want to save your mailbox. So when your team members do find the assets, the next thing they need to do is uh, maybe download it. So they can come here to the platform and select download. Now, one of the powerful things about the IB Dam is the transformations on the fly. So with this asset, I uploaded one asset of the highest quality, not 15. And my team member can come in here and say, well, I need a JPEG or a PNG, a certain type of compression and crop it. I can also add a few more options in like flipping and rotating. And again, now my team member can get the exact image they need when they need it. Now, if your team members aren't sure what they need, uh, maybe they go into YouTube and they need a cover photo. Now, they, I'm sure we've all seen people where they've downloaded it, gone into an external platform, edited it, or maybe not even done that, uploaded it for a use case, and it's been stretched, or it's blurry, or it's cut off some. We don't want you to experience that, so we want to let you create presets. So your team member can come in and say, I need a channel cover photo, and automatically it makes it the right dimensions, file sites, et cetera so that it's the right image for that use case. From there, you can auto adjust it to make the, the image fit in, crop it, et cetera, to however you need that asset. So again, really that transformation on the fly, allowing you to upload one asset, allowing your team members to find it, and then get the asset they need for their use case. Now, another option they might have is wanting to email that link. So whether I wanna share it internally or externally, um, I might have some issues with file size, You're trying to send an email to someone, no problem. You'll come to our platform and either share it internally or externally. You can tell them they only have 72 hours to download it and then simply send an email from our platform. You can also generate a share link where you could copy this link and paste it into an external platform like Teams, Slack or an email. Now, I might not want to email this time. Maybe this time I actually want to share my content by getting a share link. So in my share link, I could either share or embed as we saw in the demo by selecting the three dots and picking this time share and embed. This again, power is allowing team members not to simply download, upload, but to come in and get the link that they need or the type of file they need. They can get presets and copy that CDN link. They can get an embed code, put in text, custom default sizes, and again, copy that code. Now, all of the links you've just seen are all our CDN links, so our email link as well. All of those mean that the file originates from your platform and wherever you share it, it's there. So again, making sure um, we've got that single source of truth. Now in the platform, um, you might wanna share multiple assets from across the platform. So you're able to select multiple assets and add it to a collection. This could be a consent form, images, logos, et cetera. 
And when we grab all those together, we might want to share it to maybe an agency or maybe a, an external media. As you can see, we've got all our assets. I simply click share in the top right hand corner and I've got my internal or public share links and I've got my 48 hours to use this and download it and I simply send it from the platform. Protecting your assets, keeping single source of truth. And again, if I uploaded a new version on top of this, it would automatically update that link so that they had the right asset at the right time. Now, another thing we talked about here was um, protecting your downloads or uploads. So you can set permissions where team members can't just download, they actually need to ask permission first. So this could be for sensitive data or sensitive assets. You can decide all these questions are customizable and you can come in here and answer them and maybe even add some automation. So your automation for internal use only might be that if someone selects this, they actually don't need a human to approve it. It can auto approve and they get their request approved and they can download. Whereas if it's TV or broadcast, because it's high risk, we want it to go to the CMO or the CEO to ensure that it's approved before usage. Intelligence Bank will allow you to create all these rules and allow when the download happens, it goes to the right person at the right time. This is also available for upload as well. Inside the approval center is where you'll, if you do want a human to say yes or no, they'll come in and either approve or decline. And they can even use our proofing technology to mark it up and say, change this logo before I say yes. Okay, so the uh, next thing, so what we've done so far is we learned how to upload with our metadata. We learned how to find it and then how to share it or download by transforming on the fly. The next thing we wanna do is look at um, how to create those brand approved um, templates. So in our platform, our team members will come to the platform and be able to access a brand approved template where everything is locked down except for the small edits you allow them to make. Again, keeping that high compliance and self-serve. Inside here, my imagery, my text, my numbers, my logo are all locked down, but I can come in here and change the email address and phone number because that's what I need it to be. From here, all I need to do is save this and use it. I can download it, print it, etc. So that's again using that power of our dam to keep brand approved templates with self-serve access and compliance. Now, and last but not least, let's look at the dashboards here. In our dashboards, we have that at a glance look where we can see what's happening on our dam. How many of our assets are using that CDN link? They're publicly ex external links. What's on our dam? What's expiring coming up? So things like in the next 30 days or what slipped through the cracks and needs to be looked at right now. From here, I can simply come in and edit that asset, look at it and either archive it or change that review date. I can look at things from a brand perspective or a product perspective and see where my gaps are or what's even new to my dam. Uh, this is also available in reports and other areas as well. So again, this is everything we learned. We need to protect our dam with um, making sure people can search, self-serve, transform on the fly and save your inbox and your time. Thanks, Jade. Uh, so in about 10 minutes, uh, Jade just gave us a tour of Intelligence Bank highlighting the best practices we covered today, which were audit your assets, make it your central location, your one-stop shop, make self-serve easy with naming conventions and folder structures, make search more powerful with better metadata, share it, integrate your MarTech stack with connectors, integrations, APIs, and transform assets on the fly, as well as automate workflows, automate compliance and governance and reporting. So that's it for our damn best practices webinar. Uh, we're gonna end with a quote from our inspirational leader, Tessa Court. A good dam will save you from the flood of content chaos. So if you would like a personalized demonstration of anything we showed you today, we would be happy to assist. Um, you can arrange that either by contacting your intelligence bank account manager, if you're a customer, 
or if you are new to Intelligence Bank, you can message us via salesintelligencebank.com or just complete one of the forms on our website. So that brings us to the end of uh, today's presentation. I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us today. We hope you found this helpful and educational. And from everyone at Intelligence Bank, we wish you all the best on your damn journey.